So this is part two in Levine's conservation model. And up on this slide is an example of application to practice in the preterm infant in the NICU. I picked this example because I've spent most of my career working in maternity health um, fields. And currently I'm working as a lactation consultant here in Boise at St. Al's Hospital. And so I, I spend a lot of time in the NICU um, helping moms and babies up there too. The application of the theory of health promotion for preterm infants was based on the Bean's conserva conservation model by Lynn, and it was done by Linda Mefford in 2004. Um, this looks at the immature infant who is now abruptly exposed to an extra uterine, uterine environment that provides a poor fit for the developing physiological system. So the parents are now also simultaneously dealing with two potential crises the birth of a child and the illness of a family member. This, these both can cause a disruption to wholeness. We look at the baby, the preterm infant in the NICU, and they can also have some physiological immaturity, which can cause a threat to balance of energy. For example, the lungs of a preterm infant are one of the final organs to reach maturity. So the preterm infants can have an inadequate production of surfactant and also structural inadequacy of lung tissue. There's also structural immaturity, which can threaten structural integrity. So example of this can be the impaired barrier function of the skin and the immature immune systems that the premature infant has, which can increase the risk for infections. Their neurological immaturity is also a threat to personal integrity. An example of this is that the NICU environment can have an adverse effect on the process of CNS organization, possibly creating potentially potential for altered patterns of neuronal, neuronal connections, neurological damage, and long-term developmental disorders, and family systems, which is also a threat to social integrity. Examples, many challenges for the family system due to grieving the loss of a healthy infant, disruption in bonding and attachment, and parenting a child who could possibly have special needs. So adaptation is with the goal that the preterm infant attempts to generate an integrated adaptive response to fit the extra uterine environment. And so this diagram here helps me visualize how this conservation model can help uh, the nurses to make interventions to help promote the health um, and conservation of the preterm infant. So on this slide, we're going to look at nursing care for the preterm infant in the NICU based on the Levine's conservation model. So these are interventions that go with the, when we're looking at the whole conceptual diagram. So to conserve energy, nursing interventions um, can be used to promote conservation of energy, which can include support, supporting the pulmonary and cardiovascular systems. And conserving structural integrity, nursing interventions directed at minimizing the infant's need for oxygenation and ventilation can also help reduce the likelihood of lung damage. So we know that minimizing the need for supplemental oxygen may help reduce the likelihood of both retinal damage and brain injury. So nurses, for personal integrity, we should also take a leading role to modify the NICU to provide a developmentally supportive environment for the preterm infant. To conserve social integrity, we need to assist the family through the crisis period surrounding a preterm birth and make the NICU more welcoming to the family and also do interventions that promote parental comfort and competence and foster parent-infant attachment. And um, conservation of wholeness um, is the goal for the nurses to help the infant and family to achieve a level of independent functioning that enables the infant to be able to be discharged from the NICU to the care of the family on or before the baby's expected due date for term gestation. So different interventions that I've seen in the NICU and that were discussed in this um, in MEFERDS were doing musculoskeletal interventions to promote a normal posture and proper balance of flexure and extensor tone in the preterm infant, and making sure the NICU provided ed patient education, parent education, um, and had performance and of infant care skills and teaching parents behavior cues of their infants to help them feel more comfortable and to, to develop their confidence. Another application that um, helped me understand the conservation model was I found um, practicing 
was to practice, they practiced it in the second stage of labor. So the labor nurse will provide interventions that promote wholeness or integra integrity utilizing the four principles of conservation. And this was in Waller and Weiss in 2008. So different ways that they implemented this was the labor nurse will conserve the laboring woman's energy to be expended only as necessary. So um, they discussed in this article the laying, pushing, and effort until appropriate, um, which they had different recommendations for what that time was that I'm not going to discuss in, in this um, PowerPoint. And number two, the nurse aids in preserving the structural integrity of the patient by providing supportive interventions. And some of the ones discussed in this um, article were encouraging position changes every 30, mi 30 minutes during the second stage of labor, applying warm compresses to the perineum, which helped um, preserve that structural integrity. And then number three was interventions to preserve personal integrity and self-image. And they found that a lot of times during labor, women did not feel like they were having their personal integrity self-image being preserved. And so by providing privacy during care um, helped support that. And then number four, the labor nurse will develop an interpersonal relationship with the patient. So the labor nurse is, spends a lot of time with the patient during that second stage of labor. And so they can help create that interpersonal relationship. And they also encourage the nurse to encourage participation of the woman's support team. So the goal is for the labor nurse to provide therapeutic interventions within an external environment that creates a place of safety to allow the normal labor hormones of the internal environment to function at the optimal level. This can decrease the patient's organismic response of fear. So I'm going to answer some questions that were found in our book on evaluation of um, theories. And then I'm going to have you guys help me answer um, a lot more of that. So one of the questions in the text, in our text, was how does the theory define person health environment and nursing? So the nursing paradigm, according to Levine, um, a person is a holistic being who constantly strives to preserve wholeness and integrity. And health is defined as health and disease are patterns of adaptive change. Health implies unity and integrity. And the goal of nursing is to promote health. And the environment, which we discussed on a different slide, but the environment completes the wholeness of the individual. The individual has both an internal and external environment, where the internal environment combines the physiological and pathophysiological aspects of the individual and is constantly challenged by the external environment. And the external environment includes factors that impinge on and, and, and challenge the individual. And nursing is defined as a human interaction. The nurse enters into a partnership of human experience where sharing moments in time, some trivial, some dramatic, leaves its mark forever on each patient. And I appreciated that, um, the way she defines the, the nurse-patient um, relationship. Another question um, that we had in our book was, what are specific statements that clarify exactly what the theory is trying to describe? And so here's one statement that I hope tries to explain exactly what this theory is. So Levine proposes the goal of nursing care is to restore wholeness to the person. The way a person returns to wholeness is by adaptation within the person's, person's internal and external environments. To provide person-centered care or patient-centered care, the nurse specifically provides interventions for conservation in four areas. Conservation of energy, conservation of structural integrity, conservation of And the last one is the conservation of social integrity. So another question that was found in our book is how general is the theory? Could it be used in many types of nursing settings or is it limited to a selected type of nursing client situations? So the model, Levine's model can be useful in a variety of situations and patient conditions across a lifespan. I found examples um, out there for lots of different varieties of situations. For example, I found one for developing a protocol for minimal handling of premature infants, establishing a care plan for family with a developmentally disabled child, assisting nurses in the care of children, a framework for wound care focusing on structural integrity, nursing care for patients after radical hy hysterectomy, 
assisting patients with fatigue and developing interventions to reduce disabling symptoms, and a framework for organizing the care of individuals with chronic illness. So I believe that this theory is general enough that it can be used in many different types of nursing settings. Um, so I'm going to ask your help to help evaluate Levine's conservation model in this week's discussion board. Here's some of the questions that if, um, would be helpful to answer listed on the slide. They're also listed in our textbook. Well, actually, it's a, not our textbook, but our, our theory book. Um, so if you want to add some of your input on this week's discussion board, I would appreciate it. Here's the references I used to make this PowerPoint and for the talking points throughout the PowerPoint. Thank you.